Mix, let's talk about the Denmark win. What impressed you most about the team's performance? And was there anything you felt uh, the squad could potentially improve on? Um, impressed me the most, I think, just the, the discipline, especially in defence. They, ob they obviously have a great player in Harder who can change the game in an instance, and I think we did really well to sort of suppress her in the game. Um, anything we could do better? Um, I think for the game that it was, the girls did really well, and um, France is a different game, so I think we'll, we'll look at different things going into that game. Yeah. Can you explain the emotions, what they were like for you when you saw that first goal go in? Yeah, um, I've been trying to like keep calm on the bench, but it hasn't really been working. So now I've just been letting loose. And um, for me, I don't process anymore. I just scream in excitement. So that's how I've been handling it. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, the last two performances from the Matildas have been one of their best, I think, in recent history. Have they even blown you away? Um, I think so. I think when the final whistle goes and you can sort of relax and reflect on, on how well we sort of played, I think um, it really does sort of give you that confidence that everything that we are doing in training really does, does help and does matter and can win you matches. So I think we've been working hard in just staying focused on the little things and I think that's really come, come out in our game and, yeah, given us a lot of confidence. And what's it been like for you this tournament? Because um, you've spent most of the time coming off the bench. And, and does Tony have you prepared for what kind of role you may play leading into that match? Yeah, I think for me it's been a little bit different picking up a knock in the France game before the tournament. Um, but in saying that, everyone works hard at training. And honestly, we've got 23 players that, that could come in at the drop of the hat and do a job. Um, everyone knows sort of the role that they play um, on the pitch and and it is sort of just making sure that you're switched on all the time. So for me, yeah, it's just focusing on being ready to, to come in and what's required with me, of me in, in certain positions as well. And it's highly likely we'll see quite a bit of you coming up, potentially with the option of 120 minutes and or penalties. How do you prepare yourself for that? And are you willing to step up and take a pen if required? Absolutely. I think I've always been a player that will take on responsibility. Um, and I think you've seen that in me playing left wing back or, or left back and sometimes even right back. Um, I don't sh sort of shy away from, from learning new things or taking on new responsibilities. And um, I think if, if you are sort of a, a game changer, so coming off the bench, I think it's really important to be switched on from, from the start of the game and sort of watching what's, what's unfolding in front of you and, and being prepared for when you do step on the field. You mentioned that France game leading into the World Cup. Do you think you can take um, a lot of confidence and or takeaways from that game or do you think it's a total different ball game now that the World Cup started? Um, I think it will be a different game um, just with sort of how France played in the group stage and then coming into knockout stages. I think it'll be a different game but we can definitely take confidence in knowing that um, we do, you know, we do match their calibre. We, we have beaten them and, and we're more than capable of it so I think that's there's confidence in that, but at the same time, it's a knockout game in the World Cup, so it's, of course, going to be a different game. Did you watch their game against Morocco last night, and what did you think of their performance? Yeah, of course, we watched it. Um, we've been watching literally every game. It's exciting. Um, yeah, I think, obviously, you saw a lot of their strengths come out. Um, I don't think they were tested in, in certain areas, though, so I think um, there are definitely um, certain aspects of their game that I think will, will benefit us. And you, you mentioned taking in the rest of the tournament. Has there been a specific team that's really impressed you so far? Um, honestly, I think a lot of the teams have, have sort of impressed me. I, yeah, going back to the group stages, I think no group was an easy group. Um, and you saw that in some of the results and, and Germany being knocked out early. And um, so I think a credit to, to a lot of them, to Nigeria, Morocco, I think um, Colombia's just gone out and given it their all as well. So I think, yeah, there's, there's been a lot of impressive teams. What has this World Cup on home soil meant to your daughter, Harley? Um, uh, I don't know, it's, it's been so crazy just to, see, just to see her and I guess every other little kid in the stand, like so excited to, to be at the games, see, take in the atmosphere. Um, I think I'm excited for like, you know, when she's a bit older and she reflects on it as well, or when she really gets into her own football or, or dancing or whatever she wants to do. Um, 
just for her to sort of talk about her experiences that she's had now um, as a little girl. She obviously talks a lot now, but I think as her comprehension gets, gets more and more, I'm really excited to, to hear how she felt in these times. You've grown up playing a lot of your football here in Australia, in fact, here in Brisbane. What, can you mention like a little moment that there's been where you've just thought, wow, this game has absolutely taken off? I feel like the last four weeks where there's been so many moments like that, um, whether it's been at, at our own games with record crowds or even just watching other teams having record crowds here in Australia. Um, I think you, you kind of see that stuff in Europe, but over here sort of down under with sort of less exposure than what Europe sort of has with football and the energy they put into football but to see it all here in our backyard has just blown my mind and um, I guess opened up everyone's eyes um, as to how how big the football community can be and um, and how much it can help us. And final question um, obviously enormous game on Saturday potentially one of the biggest games that Matildas have ever played in how do you prepare for that game and, and what do you want to see from from the, the fans there on Saturday? Um, from the fans, as, as much noise as possible, as much support as you can, because it really does hype us up. And um, yeah, going into one of our biggest games, it is something that we will yeah um, look to use as much as possible. Is, is the home advantage? But um, for us, I think it's just staying focused and being in that moment um, and winning every moment that we can moving forward. Got one more cheeky question, but we were just wondering. We've asked a few players around who they think is the quickest. We've had a debate on Optus Sport. Who do you think is the quickest player in the team? In the Tillies? Yeah. I mean, Viney's pretty quick. Rasso's pretty quick when she gets going. Kate's body quick. Mary's quick on the turn. To, and you can't yeah. miss the whole team. No, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you've got Lydia, who's really quick over five metres. Um, well, I don't know. That's quite competitive um, in our team. I don't think I can give you a definitive answer. Well played. Unless we look at GPS stats, but I don't have those, so sorry. Send them through when you get those. <laughs> It'll be lovely. Did you enjoy that? There's so much more, so why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.